Okay, let us begin with our discussion on ellipse. Yesterday we have derived the standard equation of ellipse and got the basic properties in place. Let us continue our discussion with some additional properties. Now, y is equal to mx plus c is tangent to x square upon a square plus y square upon b square is equal to 1. Find condition for tangents. How M, C, A and B should behave so that this line is tangent to this curve. Easy. We have done it several times. Get me the condition for tangency, find the condition for tangency and point of contact. Okay, let x1 comma y1 belong to the ellipse and we draw tangent at that point, then our equation of tangent is x x1 upon a square plus y y1 upon b square minus 1 is equal to 0. Correct. And if we write equation mx minus y plus c is equal to 0 and both of them should be tangents. So both of them should be the same geometric line having two different algebraic expressions and hence their coefficients must be proportional. Therefore x1 upon a square upon m should be equal to y1 upon b square upon minus 1 is equal to minus 1 upon c. Oh, good. Directly we got the point of contact. Therefore, x1 is equal to minus a square m by c. So, in this way, you get the point of contact first and the condition for tangency let b square by m. Now, how these x1 and x y1 are? They are on ellipse. Therefore, they satisfy equation of ellipse. So, minus a square m upon c bracket square into 1 upon a square plus b square upon c bracket square into 1 upon b square is equal to 1. It must satisfy and that is what we will give us condition for tangency. So, a fourth m square upon a square. So, a square m square upon c square plus b square upon c square is equal to 1 implies c square is equal to a square m square b square. This is condition for tangency. This is point of contact. Very easy. You can solve simultaneously and make discriminant equal to zero to get the condition for tangency first, followed by point of contact. That could be another method of doing the same thing. But this has to be now routine for you. You need not have to think for doing all these things. It has to be basic. Okay. Good. Let me give some numbers also to these questions. Maybe today's first question, today's second question, now today's third question. Find auxiliary equation. in terms of slope 
for getting tangents to x square upon a square plus y square upon b equal to one, passing through points. X one comma y. X one comma y one is any point in the plane. You want tangents to be drawn. So you need slope. So which auxiliary equation will you solve to get the slopes? Y is equal to m x plus minus under root a square m square plus b square. Because we have found out c is equal to radical this, so this is the line which is going to be the going to be tangent to ellipse, and what we are asked to do is that this line should pass through x one y one, and therefore y one minus m x one is equal to radical a square m square plus b square. This should give us quadratic in m. M square inside bracket x one square minus a square minus two a minus two x one y one m plus y one square minus b square is equal to zero. This is your quadratic equation, which if you solve, you will get two slopes and you will get two tangents. Condition. Now, what is the product of the roots in this case? Product of the roots is y one square minus b square upon x one square minus a square. Correct? This is product of the slopes. And if you happen to make them minus one product, so in what is then? This is the special case when both the tangents are perpendicular to each other. What is that you get? Then we will get relationship of x one comma y one. It's a basically it is going to be the point of intersection of perpendicular tangents. So it's a locus. The locus of point of intersection of perpendicular tangents is this, which is y one square minus b square plus x one square minus a square is equal to zero. Implies replacing x one and y one by x and y respectively, we get x square plus y square is equal to a square plus b square. Oh, this is circle. So locus of perpendicular tangents to given ellipse is a circle and is known as direct circle. And the radius of that is radical a square plus b square, so it's going to be a radical x square plus b square, some circle outside this ellipse, from where if you happen to draw two tangents, they are going to be perpendicular. It is that easy. One after the other, there is a chain by which you derive all the properties of these conic sections. Was like director circle. In case of parabola, it was straight line. Directrix, director circle. So you understand those names also. It was a line there for directrix. Otherwise, otherwise that line is a director circle of parabola because locus of point of intersection of perpendicular tangents. In case of circle, it is what? It is yet another concentric circle, director circle, isn't it? From perpendicular tangents, you want perpendicular tangents. It is going to be something root two. Two. If this is x square plus y square is equal to a square, original given circle. Then you must get this square, right? So what should be the radius of director circle? X square plus y square is equal to two a square, correct? Again, 
नहीं यस यस रूट टू टाइप रूट टू स्क्वायर इन केस ऑफ सर्कल इट इज दिस नाउ यू विल लुक एट कीप लुकिंग एट द सिमेट्री when a becomes b or b square was a square into 1 minus e square correct when b square becomes e a square practically e becomes zero it's a limiting so suppose if you assume e little less little greater than zero e is little greater than now okay kuthe challo hai mi pan theek hai sangto tumhala this is a s and your directrix suppose this is s and directrix is here so if your e becomes e is equal to 1 here correct right? half way distance between directrix and focus half way distance e is equal to 1 s a upon a z is 1 so this a moves near s okay our eccentricity decreases suppose s and a are so close they are not coincident but very very close so that e becomes very small 0.000 something one in other words it means your these directrix are far away they are the lines at infinity and when s coincides with a both the sides the directrix both the directrix go to infinity because e becomes zero b square is equal to a square and you happen to get that circle and the ratio of compression which is b upon a becomes one there is no compression and that is what i can show you here because if i replace b by a i get director circle of circle so ellipse circle is special ellipse you can say that circle is a special ellipse but anyway don't get into that so early and we will continue our properties property number next four green four number property what i should give you is t is equal to 0 we already know all four interpretations interpretations okay fine uh pole of y is equal to mx plus c e is going to be same whatever you have found out माइनस ए स्क्वेर एम बाय सी कमा बी स्क्वेर बाय सी दिस इज गोइंग टू बी पोल पोल पोलर रियलिटी इज आल्सो गोइंग टू वर्क बिकॉज़ दे आर द रिजल्ट्स व्हिच आर कॉमन टू एनी कोनिक सेक्शन जॉइंट पोल पोलर डे आई विल जस्ट मेंशन देम बिकॉज़ यू नीड टू यूज दोस रिजल्ट्स फॉर एवरी कोनिक सेक्शन सो पोल पोलर रियलिटी � Seven joint equation of tangents. Which is t square is equal to s s one. Eight equation of tangent in terms of midpoint. T is equal to s one. These are very common things. So maybe just to refresh and to get the idea about how this goes, let me give you one ellipse. We have not. I have not given you any ellipse so far. X square upon twenty five plus y square upon nine is equal to one. Suppose this is ellipse, and inside I go three units. On the x-axis and 
one unit on y axis okay m is supposed to be midpoint of the corn this is ellipse by 3 minor axis length of minor axis is 2 times b which is 6 this is 6 and this is 10 okay then this is 10 therefore point is somewhere here and we want an equation of chord such that that point is that point is bit kar ho gaya find the equation of normal at p x 1 y 1 and your ellipse is x x square 2 x square upon a square plus y square upon b square is equal to one. Okay. Ada. You know equation of tangent, therefore you know slope of tangent. M one M two minus one, therefore you know slope of normal. This is the slope of normal. If this is the slope of normal. What am I doing here? Is suppose you give me slope of normal three by seven, then I will start writing equation of line three x minus seven y. That is my LHS. And if you have a point on that normal, you put it in this and write on our LHS. That is that is how it has to be done very fast, very quickly. So the slope is s square y one upon b square x one. So I write the equation of normal like this: s square y one. Times x minus b square x one times y is equal to, and now I know that the point is on the line, therefore it must satisfy the LHS. So I put it in RHS. X one y one comes common out, goes in the denominator, and therefore it is an equation which is easy to remember. Basically, synergic with the equation of ellipse and tangent. Then at P. Theta. Find the equation of normal at p theta. Cosmetic changes. Okay, replacing x one by a cos theta minus b square y by b sin theta is equal to a square minus b square. So equation of normal in terms of parameter theta is a one a gets cancelled, so a x upon cos theta minus b y upon sin theta is equal to a square minus b. Very good. Next, find the equation of normal. In terms of slope, m. That means what I am asking you to do is y is equal to n x plus c is normal. So find the condition of normal c, etc. Find equation of normal in terms of slope m. Okay. Uh, our one way of writing equation of normal we have already written a square upon x one times x minus b square upon y one times y minus a square plus b square is equal to zero. This is one normal. And what we are saying now is this is another normal. M x minus y plus c is equal to zero. So both these are normals. Therefore, their coefficients must be proportional. And hence, a square upon x one m should be equal to b square upon y one into 
minus minus one to b square upon y one, which is equal to b square minus a square upon c. That gives us x one. X one is equal to. Now we cannot use these two ratios because they will be in terms of each other. But we have another ratio which is constant. So x one is equal to c a square upon m into b square minus a square. Correct. And y one is equal to. These are the points. Foot of normal. This this is. Foot of normal because x one y one is on the curve, so y one is equal to c b square on b square minus c square, and these are the points on given ellipse. Therefore, they should satisfy equation of ellipse. So c a square bracket square upon m square. Into b square minus a square bracket square. So this is x one square into one upon a square plus c b square bracket square upon b square minus a square bracket square. This is y one square into one upon b square should be equal to one. Correct. I think so. So, what is the simplification? C square a square. A square is one. Denominator of everything you can make uh, a square m square uh, a square b square m square into b square minus a square bracket square. If this is our LCM. Then c square a square from here, no. Oh, sorry. Sir, a square b square got one. One. So c square a square. Uh, c square a square. Correct, Charlie. Plus c square b square from here, and you require m square because m is not there in the denominator. Is equal to one. Which implies c square inside bracket a square plus b square m square is equal to m square inside bracket b square minus a square bracket, and hence c square is equal to or maybe c is equal to taking root simultaneously plus or minus m inside bracket b square minus a square or a square minus b square. Because this plus or minus is available outside, and it becomes radical a square plus b square. And this is your condition for tangency, and therefore equation of normal in terms of slope is equal to y is equal to m x plus minus m into b square minus a square. For radical a square plus b square m square. And the points of contact we have already found out. These are the foot of feet of normal or foot of normal. Right down. Those who have not done it. Next, find the auxiliary equation in terms of slope. That means if point x one y one not on the ellipse somewhere else is given, how you will find equations of normals? That equation we need to find in terms of slope. Ana. Okay. If you simplify this and put x is equal to x one and y is equal to y one in the above expression and write it in the expanded form, you will get it m raised to four times something plus m raised to three times something plus m raised to two times something. Is equal to zero. Something of this fourth degree equation, and then how is this auxiliary equation helping us? Suppose if at all you want to find out the normals passing through this point, then this auxiliary equation tells us how to get those slopes. That is the first use of this auxiliary equation. All the slopes. Once you solve this fourth degree equation, you will get all the four slopes. 
and hence you will get all the four lines. So maybe there will be one tangent here, one normal here. Maybe there will be another normal here. Maybe there will be some normal. Difficult to imagine, but uh, okay, some normal here, some normal here. There will be some normal again here, and there will be some normal this side somewhere. Here. So you will get to know these slopes m1, m2, m3, m4, and you get those help us. Second, it is telling us this power four here is telling us that there will be four normals. If the point is very well behaved, then there will be four normals. And then, depending upon the position of that point with respect to the ellipse, the easiest four normals that I can show you are from origin to standard standard ellipse. This is origin, so this is one normal. This is another normal. This is another normal, and this is another normal. There are four normals, and therefore this degree of this m uh, polynomial is important. Four normals we get. Okay. Now geometrically, understand this experiment by which you will come to know how you should get. Suppose we have ellipse. suppose we have ellipse suppose we have ellipse somehow it is not giving me ellipse last time suppose we have ellipse ah uh -huh. and suppose this ellipse is in a swimming pool full of water now you throw stone water is still water no waves at all the moment you throw stone in this water there will be circle circular waves which will be generated because of the stone And then you observe that those circles they these circles will first touch here oh this is one of the normals okay then it will grow it will grow it will grow 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 and then this circle will touch again somewhere here this is another normal then it will further grow and maybe it will touch somewhere here i am not sure about uh, geometry part but suppose here and then again they will grow they will grow the circles will grow even if your swimming pool is small and circles will continue to grow and then you will find that it is tangent here so this is another normal that is how if at all you want to draw normals to an ellipse this is the procedure to go you should go to swimming pool and observe and then get those points geometrically If you want algebraically, then I think we should be able to find out the points. Put up, feet up normals. We will see how to go about it. But this is geometry. How are you going to really look at? And once you start imagining it this way, you will realize that yes, if the stone is thrown to the correct point, there will be four normals. If it is at the center, then two circles internally touching will give you two points. at a time simultaneously this point and this point circle is thrown here say a stone is thrown here and then there will be two circles which will be from outside tangent and it will give you the remaining two feet of normals and hence this is it now depending upon suppose you throw stone out suppose you throw stone outside then there will be first circle which will be tangent like this so there will be a put up normal here and there will be another circle maybe which is something like this somewhere and you will end up getting one more put up now and then remaining two are gone not possible for degree equation maybe having two real roots and two imaginary roots so imaginary points you will not get 
but they we, i mean advanced study of ellipse we will be able to find out what is the region inside ellipse which in that region if we take a point we get four distinct normals that is what we can actually find out in ellipse we will not do it but yes there there some calculations can be done so that the region inside ellipse you can specify and you will get four distinct oh if the point is on the ellipse the first normal is that point itself and maybe you can draw two more difficult to draw four so it all depends upon what this equation is can it be factorized can it be factorized into a1 m square plus b1 m plus c1 into a2 m square plus b2 m plus c2 kind of factorization is it possible then after factor is after factorization are these reducible quadratic or they are irreducible quadratic so if they are all four if we can make it in looking like this m1 minus m minus constant 1 m minus constant 2 m minus constant 3 m minus constant 4 then these are the slopes all good but you may work it out and find out how many norms okay it is huge calculation so unless and until your numbers are good in the given ellipse calculations are very very complicated okay but related to this let me give you 13th problem prove that in general in general four normals can be drawn in general four normals can be drawn from any point there is my cursor why is cursor behaving badly ha huh. huh. can be drawn from any point to an ellipse and that the sum of eccentric angles of their feet is equal to an odd multiple of two right angles that is 180 odd multiple of 180 is a sum of eccentric angles first of all we are supposed to do something related to eccentric angle and normal therefore do we have equation of normal in term at p theta yes this is the equation x square uh, ax upon cos theta okay i have i am going there hmm. x upon cos theta fifty seven percent is correct. X upon cos theta minus b y upon sin theta is equal to a square minus b square. Now can we can we write a square e square for a square minus b square? Yes. So that will be little smaller than a square minus 
rupees. Okay, so this is theta is our eccentric angle, and uh, it is all these four lines are passing through say h comma k. Let h comma k be point through which all normals are possible hmm. so they are co normal points Co normal points. These people will be co normal points. Say all of them are concurrent. All the nor whole normals are concurrent at h comma k, and therefore a h upon cos theta minus b k upon sin theta is equal to a square a square is our equation. Now. We have to exploit trigonometry. Tan theta by two is equal to t. Therefore, cos theta is equal to one minus t square upon one plus t square. Sin theta is equal to two t upon one plus t square. Okay, this is our trigonometry. We know theta is our eccentric angle, but trigonometry is true, and hence by substituting here, what we are going to get is a h upon cos theta. So into one my one plus t square upon one minus t square. That is cos theta minus b k to sine theta, which is one plus t square upon two t. Is equal to a square e square. Now you clear the denominator, and you will get equation in t four. Write down that equation equal to zero. Okay, that is first part of the story that we need to complete, and then write down the expansion. Then we can find out what is sigma one, sigma two, sigma three of this t fourth equation. But then. More than that, what we are supposed to do is write down the expression for tan of theta one by two plus theta two by two plus theta three by two plus theta four by two. Why do we require this expansion? Is because we are supposed to prove uh, some of the eccentric angles of their field is equal to odd multiple of Hundred and eighty to n plus one odd multiple of one eighty. Okay, so odd multiple of ninety tan is undefined. That is what we know. So if the result is true, odd multiple of half angles should give us an undefined RHS. Undefined RHS. this and try to put these numbers which is sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 etc because uh what is t t is tan theta by 2 right tan theta by 2 and maybe theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 theta 4 are the roots of this four degree i think i have told you everything to do and you should come out with final proof saying that yes they are odd multiple of 100 okay so the fourth degree in the t i will write directly and it looks like this t4 into bk plus 2t cube into ah plus a square e square plus 2t into A H minus a square e square minus b k. Can can you confirm this? Is it correct? This is important equation. Use a yes, lot of information. 
first information that we get is sigma 1 that is t1 plus t1 plus t2 plus t3 plus t4 is equal to minus 2 into a h plus a square e square divided by bk this is sigma 1 sigma 2 happens to be 0 this is sigma 1 sigma 2 happens to be 0 because there is no term of t square and sigma 3 sigma 3 is a h now this is minus so minus 2 a h minus a square e square i don't know whether this is required or not but we have to calculate bk and sigma 4 is equal to minus 1 bk upon bk these are the interesting facts about this fourth degree equation in t now i have asked you to expand this summation of four angles and tan of it then you will end up getting sigma tan theta 1 by 2 that means theta 1 by 2 tan theta 1 by 2 plus tan theta 2 by 2 that is your first term in numerator minus second term in numerator is sigma tan theta 1 by 2 tan theta 2 by 2 tan theta 3 by 2 plus 3 at a time all of them sigma takes care of that this is what is your numerator denominator you have 1 minus sigma tan theta 1 by 2 tan theta 2 by 2 2 at a time plus 4 at a time all of them tan theta 1 by 2 tan theta 2 by 2 tan theta 3 by 2 tan theta 4 by 2 so this is now this is our what already already the information that we have so numerator sigma t1 plus t2 is tan so is this sigma 1 first one first bracket i have written it as s1 sigma 1 minus sigma 3 upon 1 minus sigma 2 which is 0 and this is sigma 4 minus 1 so sigma 1 minus sigma 3 upon 0 is tan of this i mean we should not write it like this but i am showing that this is odd multiple of 90 that directly implies this directly implies sum of That is, this implies theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 plus theta 4 upon 2 is 2n plus 1 into 90 is equal to proof. Okay, so this is what is the proof of sum of eccentric angles of conormal points is odd multiple of 90. Next problem, a curve of an ellipse subtends 90 degree at its center. Show that it touches a circle. Concentric with ellipse. Okay. 
Okay, this is a, I mean, there are more than one ways of solving this. I might solve by one method, you solve by whatever method you think right. Uh, it can be done using trigonometric form of the chord or you can you do it otherwise also, but I will prefer to do it using and therefore if eccentric angle of P is theta and eccentric angle of Q is phi, these are the two points on the ellipse, theta P and it is supposed to be 90 degree at origin. So Q, Q is phi, P is theta. Then what is the equation of chord? We have derived it yesterday. X upon A cos of theta plus phi by two plus Y upon B sine theta plus phi upon two is equal to cos of theta minus phi upon two, right? And this is homogenization problem because you are supposed to have angle at center equal to 90 degree. And this is the equation of chord that you have. Therefore, what you are supposed to do is solve homogenize with the ellipse x square upon a square plus y square upon b square plus or maybe minus 1 is to be replaced by x upon a cos theta plus phi by 2 uh, plus y upon b sine theta plus phi by 2. This is your numerator and the denominator is cos of theta minus phi by 2. This is 1, but we need 1 square. Um, I mean, we need to homogenize. Therefore, we need power of this entire thing. If 2 is equal to 0. This is the joint equation of the lines passing through intersection of chord P and Q and origin. And then what is the condition if they are supposed to be perpendicular, then coefficient of X square and Y square should be added to zero. So let us try to collect the coefficient of X square. Coefficient of X square, one upon X square minus uh, what is this? This upon this bracket square. So cos square theta plus phi upon 2 upon uh, we have a also here. So a square cos theta minus phi upon 2 uh, theta square. This is coefficient of x square, right? Plus 1 upon b square minus sine square. This should be equal to zero, correct? So if this is equal to zero, by looking at this expression, we should conclude that there exists circle, what is supposed to be proved? Uh, that it touches the circle concentric with ellipse. So, huh. so th this is our chord and it is supposed to touch the circle concentric with ellipse. Then the circle is going to look like, huh. we can find out na, how the circle should look like. 
if it is tangent so from what is the distance of this line from origin we can find out that distance of d is equal to or maybe d square is equal to yeah better this numerator you put zero so these two terms are gone and you have cos theta minus pi upon 2 bracket square that is what is your numerator and in the denominator you have actually you have radical but that radical is gone because of the square in the denominator you have a square plus b square so cos square theta plus pi by 2 plus upon a square plus sin square theta plus pi by 2 on b square this is our denominator and with this expression that you have with you can you show that this is constant and you will observe that after just one simplification uh, this cos square theta minus is available in the denominator what you should do is just take this cos square upon a square is also uh, is it the reciprocal of this with 1 upon a square and 1 upon b square on rhs are can you see that is this d square reciprocal of these two terms added i mean if they are added okay let me finish 1 upon a square plus 1 upon b square is equal to cos square theta plus something plus this minus sin square uh minus sin square cos square parallel chale na uh cos square this upon a square so minus sin square bracket upon b square whole divided by cos square theta minus pi upon 2 correct so if you take reciprocal of this it is this and it is constant therefore there exists a circle touching this all the chords which subtend 90 degree at the same is it clear